and welcome back to my channel hope you're doing well so today we are talking about something that i wanted for the longest time and it's not a review it's just an unboxing because i haven't used this product i'm just taking it out and sharing the views why i bought this why you should consider or should not consider buying this so today we are talking about the a7 IV the successor for a7 III A74, the thing that I was waiting for the longest, longest time of my life. Initially, I was going with the A73, but since the Sony announced this, might as well future proof everything. That's why I bought this. So, before I give you an overview and everything, let's start with the specs, features, and the good stuff that comes in this camera. On top of my head is 422. 10 bit 422 is in this camera. Uh, the all intra can be shot internally, you just need a CFX card and that can basically brings me to the second point it supports cfx cards that are that is basically type a which is quite hard to find and even if you find it it's a bit on the pricier side so the third feature that is really good is yeah seeing this the flip screen which a7 didn't have but a7 s3 does flip screen always good can give you a certain angle which was not possible with a7 III. Let's suppose you want to shoot something at a really, really low angle or what the trend is going on right now. If you want to shoot an, uh, what do you call it, a reel in a portrait mode and want to go low, low would not have been possible with a7 III because it just flips up, that's it. Fourth feature is the slow motion is there, at least for me, that it's, but it shoots in 1080. Uh, 4K, 30, 24, and 60 is, but 60 is with is an with an asterisk, asterisk sign on it because the sensor will crop into your image, but you can always compensate it with a much wider lens. And another thing that is really, 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 really good in this is ergonomics. It's much the grip over here is much deeper, feels really nice to hold, and and what I noticed while using a Canon is jack for your mic which doesn't hinder even if you want to open something else so the mic is out of the way and the improved evf is there obviously and it shoots 10 10 frames per second one more thing that is really really beneficial is for the videos is dual native iso so s log 3 can be shot in this camera with a dual native iso one at 800 and another at 3200 and the megapixel count on this camera is 33. Let's start with an application. So uh, if you are new to Sony lineup or Sony cameras in general, specifically the Alpha series, the first thing that will confuse you or which used to confuse me is the A7 with the alphabet R or the S or in fact, no alphabet like A7 IV, Alpha 7 IV. So the R stands for resolution, which is basically a photography camera first and S stands for sensitivity, which is the sensitivity of your ISO or the sensitivity towards the light. So S stands for the basically is dedicated towards the video first camera. So has much uh, feature rich video aspect into it while the R has photography aspect baked into it. So both of them will perform it while the A7 with no alphabets is dedicated towards the hybrid shooter. So the people like me who wants to basically carry a single camera, this has a 33 megapixel count, which is a huge deal uh, if you consider it through a photographer's point because 33 megapixel camera or the sensor will provide you a larger image, one. Second, will enable you to do crop, aggressive crop onto your image in post, but that's a downside for the video, why? Because the larger sensor size is, uh, it's much harder for the camera to perform in low lighting situation. There's another thing that is really important that is a huge uh, upgrade over A7 III is S-Log3. Now, yes, you can shoot S-Log3 which provides you with a much larger dynamic range 
which is really beneficial if you want to color grade, if you want to do post processing, and it is in 10 bit color 10 bit 4 to 2. So that basically enables you to do aggressive color grades if you want to. Plus, it's all it also comes with the S Cinetone, which you will find in S series. So, considering the fact that it's an it's an hybrid shooter and you have that feature of that, plus dial down version of R series with a 64 megapixel sensor, you have 33. I don't think it's a bad deal and it's obviously a huge improvement. The viewfinder on this is really, really good. If we are talking about the videos, uh, the CFX card is a huge benefit because now you are able to shoot all intra, basically the highest level of Kodak video, 4K video into it way on to the CFX card. And you have face tracking, active face tracking on 4K. So another feature that uh, you might have noticed is, or the A7 III had, but now it's, it has been improved upon is the customizable buttons over here. The customizable buttons were already present in A7 III. In fact, every Sony line, Alpha line lineup has it. And another thing that is a huge benefit and you will only know it once you start using it or once you basically integrate into your workflow is the button over here which is which can be used to flip between the camera mode the video mode and the snq mode for a7 IV, what i can definitely tell you is once you switch it you can basically set every button customize every button as per a specific need of yours and can be saved separately so c1 can perform as a white balance auto white balance selector in photo mode and can perform as once you switch it to the video mode it can perform as the frame rate selector another thing that is really good in this camera is the low light capability dual native iso will help you in a so in so so many scenarios and plus the low light capabilities of the sony are always really good so dual, dual native iso will provide you a flexible range to basically shoot s lock whether it's a day or night situation and plus it can't be done the camera can't do do the whole thing you will have to put a fast lens onto it but it's a huge benefit so that's how this is designed that's how you will be using it if you are a hybrid shooter if you want to use it for the uh, for the video purposes only you can do that for the photo purposes only yes it's a really really versatile camera should you buy this or is it even for you camera that you want will differ and will depend on what you basically need from a camera or your use case, right? So for my case, I needed a high, something that could shoot photo and video, thus a 7 uh, You might need something that sh should perform really well in the video aspect or in the low lighting situation, then you might have to go with the S series and altogether ditch it. Or you want something that can basically produce a high megapixel photo, high resolution photo, then you might have to skip this as well as the A7. S series and might have to go for the R series. If you find that your needs and my needs are somewhat closer or somewhere in the range, this might be useful for you. A7 III, what I know is A7 III doesn't basically focus on to your active face tracking is not there in A7 III if you are shooting 4K, while it does. If you, if you are someone who is looking into color grading this footage and wants to shoot s log wants the highest dynamic range you will have to go with this but if you are someone who is okay with 8-bit color doesn't want to color grade that much and is okay with 24 megapixel sensor you don't need to upgrade to a7 IV at this cert this moment uh, a7 III is still selling a lot of people are buying a7 III because it's much more friendly budget friendly and plus it's readily available. If you are someone who wants to upgrade the quality or basically wants to shoot 4K, S-Log3, Cinetone or wants to color grade, might as well go for that because Sony A7 III won't be able to provide you that. It's an only 8-bit camera. So no hits on the A7 III because initially I was planning for that. So I have done my research. Uh, that's why I jumped to this because I want to future proof everything. And besides, if you want something higher than this, either you go for the Cine line up, F FX6 or something uh, Blackmagic camera, cinema camera or anything, if you have the budget for that. But for anybody who is a hybrid shooter or just wants to do a video or a photo, this will suffice and even A7 III will suffice. It totally boils down to what you need, what you want from the camera and 
how you want to use it. One more thing that I forgot to mention is the focus mapping. So it, fo it has focus mapping which basically helps you to basically focus onto a subject if you are using a manual lens. All things said and done, if you find what I do really interesting or helps you in any way, do consider subscribing, hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I post and do give me a follow if you are interested into the photos that you can get from this sensor. I will be posting it over there. The Instagram handle should be over here somewhere. So take care of yourselves and the cases are still on the rise. So keep yourself safe, keep your family safe and see you. Wait.